Okay, is recording already, huh? Yes. Okay, can give me three minutes, ah. You don't call Zhang, ah. You don't call Zhang, lah. Three days later. All right, welcome to Nuggets on the Go, episode number 25. And today we're going to release the quarter two report of our real estate market in Singapore. So let's move on to this episode. Let's go. For today's episode, it's going to be a short brief because we're going to bring you through the most important portions of the report. And most important is that this is going to be released on our PLB Insights page and you'll be able to head down and download the report. Just need to, of course, subscribe to our channel as well as to subscribe to our mailing list because we hope to keep in touch with you with all the different kinds of charts as well as the main report itself. And we hope to share our charts progressively with you. And for today's episode, we want to go through and highlight some of the very interesting segments of the quarter two real estate market trends report. We have also released some of the latest charts on our propertylimbras.com website. Head on to the website, look for the two segment. You will be able to see this sub menu called real estate charts. And from there, we'll continue to upload some of the very interesting charts. So just to give you a quick glimpse of what it will look like. So firstly, our analytics team and research team have created some very interesting charts that looks like this. So what we are aspiring to do with these charts is to look at some of the movement and correlation. And if there were to be any correlation between Singapore property price index of the landed market, the condo market, as well as the HDB market, this is this some of the very common and very popular asset classes and commodity classes. So for example, in this particular chart, what we did was that we pump in the landed price index. We also pump in the non-landed price index, which is a combination of condos and apartments, as well as the HDB price index. And if you notice, there are four different kinds of legends right here. Firstly, we pump in the STI index, Bitcoin, S&P 500 and Ethereum. Because of course, uh, cryptocurrencies has been one of the very common things that a lot of people have been talking about in the last two years and we want to see whether were there any correlation. Now, of course, you might be asking me, hey Melvin, why are we comparing the Singapore real estate price index vis a vis Bitcoin and Ethereum. Now, one of the key rationales is because over the past two years, a lot of people not just have invested in the real estate, but they have also used some of the gains made in cryptocurrencies as well as the S&P 500 or tech stocks and extracting some of the profit margins that they have made and pump it into real estate. And of course, when there was a flush in terms of the liquidity at the earlier part of 2022, this has been one of the things that we want to track to see whether is that when everybody has their liquidity being affected, through those alternative investments, will this cause a dip in the Singapore real estate market? And we want to see that correlation right here within this chart. And of course, the second chart is that we did a correlation chart to look at the three different indexes versus interest rate. And over here, we're palming the cyborg interest rate vis-a-vis -vis the Fed interest rate. And you can see these two interest rates, they run in tandem to one another because Singapore depends a lot on the federal interest rate to see whether we need to adjust our interest rate upwards or downwards. So we also want to see whether there's any impact that we'll be forecasting on in the Q3 and Q4 season of 2022. And how does this impact the three different price indexes? Of course, something to note is that real estate is more illiquid and uh, it doesn't mean that when interest rate rise, we've talked about it in a lot of different episodes in the past, you can refer to our NOTG episode, is that we want to see what is also the time lapse difference, whether when interest rate rise, how long does it take for the property price index to adjust itself? And of course, does it really cause an impact this time round? Because out of the six, seven rounds, only one round during Asian financial crisis, did we see a downward trend? The rest of the seasons basically either price techniques or maybe price still further increase even when interest rate increase. But of course, this time around, one of the red flag that we noticed might happen. And of course, we're hoping that this might not happen, but we are thinking if let's say interest rate were to start to challenge three to three and a half percent, I mean, right now it's already at two and a half percent to closing into the high twos in terms of fixed interest rate. If let's say is further adjusted to let's say fixed rate of three percent or three and a half percent, what will be the impact on our TDSR total debt servicing ratio? Because just to give a quick recap, 
recap, when TDSL was introduced in the year 2013, June, MAS based it on a safe benchmark interest rate of 3.5% to calculate what is the affordability level of the particular borrower. So back then, everything was good and fine because our interest rate was hovering between 1% to 2% all the way since 2013 until today. However, if right now, if the fixed interest rate for every mortgage is going to be 3.5% or maybe if it's going to be 4% next year, of course, we hope that that won't happen, then will MAS and our government adjust the base interest rate inside the TDSR calculation method? Because if they were to do so, what this will mean is that, for example, if just one percentage upwards from 35 to 4.5%, this will mean that every single borrower in the market, they can technically only borrow lesser. And if that were to happen, it might mean that you might want to make a decisive decision of should you buy now or should you wait to see what will be the impact if TDSR really were to be adjusted upward with their benchmark interest rate because when everybody's affordability drop, does it cause a huge impact in the resale market or in the new launch market? And of course, everything is bearing in mind and we hope that you watch the last two episodes is that interest rate just form one out of the 10 to 13 components affecting the Singapore real estate market because Singapore is really different. And one of the key rationale is that because real estate is illiquid in nature, families that has bought in this year in 2022, last year and the year before, they're all being locked in with three years of seller stamp duty, which means that combining the factor that a lot of people are buying for own stay and combining the fact that everybody is already pricing for three years, this, even if there are minute adjustment in the interest rate during these three years, a lot of families are still enjoying their fixed locking rates over the past one to two years, then it might not cause an impact to them because by the time, let's say after 2023, if the US economy recovers, the global economies recover and let's say in 2024, everything is more rosy and more buoyant, then interest rates start to drop, for example, then property market will then be on another new run up Words. So I think importantly is just to take interest rate as one of the factor and not the only factor that affects prices. So next, we also want to look at inflation because inflation vis-a-vis -vis the performance of assets across different QE cycles is one very interesting thing. We want to firstly look at when QE happens, what happens to inflation? When QE 2 and 3 happens, what happens to inflation as well? And when tapering happens during the 2014 season as well as 2018 and right now, 2022 is also where QE just started to happen after the latest round of COVID QE. So there's been a total of four rounds of quantitative easing means government printing money, basically from Federal Reserve. And then of course, this is now the third round of QT. But this time round is different because it's QT during a high inflation season. So that's the key difference between this round of QT, which is quantitative tightening compared to the last two rounds of tapering. So this might be something that we want to take note because this round of inflation is one of the highest round over the past 12 years, ever since 2008. And we also want to see whether does this cause an impact in our Singapore real estate market. One more chart that we have came across is basically the asset performance across inflationary cycle of US inflation rate and SG inflation rate vis-a-vis -vis our price indexes. Of course, we have also listed down all the cooling measures here. So if you head on to our website, you'll be able to have a look and enjoy some of these charts and we will be updating them every single quarter at four times a year. Next thing is that we have came out with close to about 20 different charts and this will all be available in our quarter two real estate trends report that's being done by PLB Research and Insights team. So this time around the charts are very interactive because uh, let me reload this again. Basically what you see is that these are all moving charts and of course watch out for our social media. These charts are interactive. Firstly, you can play around with them. You can hover around within them. Look at the different kinds of indexes and of course we have done out a market PPI versus bubble index as well. We have also looked at some of the total unsold units right here as well as the volume performance vis-a-vis -vis the price index and also we have segregated them into different regions for example RCR, OCR and CCR. We have also looked at rental, distribution and the GRS residential land PPR pricing from 1995 till date and we segregated them from um, basically 1996 all the way to now and then we have also segregated them based on CCR, RCR and OCR. Also, we have looked at the yearly residential GFA sold in GLS by region as well. Also, a lot of very interesting charts this time round. So our team has taken a lot of time and effort to come with these beautiful charts for you so that we can all analyze them together. And our next NOTG season, we will be talking about these charts on a very deep level. Last but not least is that we are also releasing our new launches charts by OCR, RCR and CCR based on quantum pricing and based on PSF pricing as well. So 
This is something to look out for in the next few episodes of NOTG as well as on our propertybus.com insights page to look out for the download of the report. We will be sending out the link very soon and announcing it over our social media. So thank you for staying tuned with us on this Nuggets On The Go episode number 25. Hope to see you on the next few episodes. In the meantime, take care. Uh, this one is episode number one. Uh, when uh, everybody has, when everybody has their, when everybody has their, when everybody has their equity locked, is that when everybody has their liquidity.